Microtik DHCP Relay with Microsoft Windows DHCP Server. So in this video, Microtik DHCP Relay with Microsoft Windows DHCP Server. From our recent videos, we have configured bridge VLAN filtering and centralized DHCP Server in Microtik, as well as DHCP Server role in Windows Server 2012 R2. In this video, we will attempt to combine what we have learned so far. In some deployments, DHCP service is usually placed when you have a full-pledged server. So for instance, in a Windows server, as there are many advantages, particularly in a domain environment, you have also other features like DHCP failover or clustering. So we will revise our centralized DHCP server demo in which this time we will have our Windows server act as the central DHCP server for all our VLANs. So we will configure VLAN in our Microtik. Also, our Microtik will act as the DHCP relay, accommodating DHCP requests and sending it to our Windows DHCP server. And then finally, we will test if our clients that are connected to our Microtik in different VLANs will be able to get IP address from our Windows DHCP server. So we have a Microtik cloud hosted router that we have configured bridge VLAN filtering. So kindly check on our configure bridge VLAN filtering video for more details. We have VLAN 100 for our communication between the DHCP server and the DHCP relay. So our DHCP server will be addressed at 192.168.100.1 slash 24. And our DHCP relay will be addressed at 192.168.100.254 slash 24. So VLAN 100 is more like of a management VLAN. We have also VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 for our test clients. We have a Windows Server 2012 R2 here that has a DHCP server role. Please check on our video on how to install and configure DHCP server in Windows Server 2012 R2. We have configured some DHCP scopes here for our test VLANs. Then finally, we have our test clients, one in VLAN 10 and one in VLAN 20. So they should get an IP address, for example, for VLAN 10, 192.168.10. something. And for VLAN 20, 192.168.20. something. So we have turned on our Microtik, which act as our DHCP relay. So first, we have configured a bridge. Then we have added ports 2, 3, and 4. So our Ether 2 is connected to our Windows DHCP server. Our Ether 3 is connected to our VLAN 10 test client. And our Ether 4 is connected to our VLAN 20 test client. Our Ether 2 is configured on VLAN 100. So if you go in, the PVID value is 100. Our Ether 3, the PVID value is 10. So it's VLAN 10. And finally, our Ether 4 is VLAN 20. Next on our VLANs tab, we have three VLANs, VLAN 10, 20, and 100. So for VLAN ID 10, so we have added those VLAN IDs. So we have added VLAN 10, and the configuration is the tag interface is the bridge interface, and the untag interface is Ether 3. So our connection to our test client on VLAN 10. So for VLAN 20, so we also add it. So inside the tag interface is bridge 
And the untag interface is our Ether4, which is connected to our VLAN20 test client. And finally, on our VLAN ID number 100, so we have also added that one. So our tag interface is the bridge 1, and our untag interface is Ether2, our connection to our Windows Server 2012 R2. Then, of course, we have enabled in our bridge interface. So if we go inside and go to the VLAN tab, we have enabled VLAN filtering. So next, we have created several VLAN interfaces. So let's close this bridge menu window. We go to interfaces. Actually, we click the plus sign and we go in and select VLAN. So we now have three VLANs. So we have VLAN 10 that is under the interface bridge and the VLAN ID is 10. We have also VLAN 20 which has a VLAN ID of 20 and the interface is bridge 1. And finally, our VLAN 100 for our management interface. So the VLAN ID is 100. In the interface is bridge 1. So next, we have configured IP addresses for the VLAN interfaces. So let's close this interface window and we go to IP addresses. So we have an IP address for our VLAN 10 interface, 192.168.10.254 slash 24. We have our VLAN 20, which is 192.168.20.254 slash 24. And we have our VLAN 100 management IP, which is 192.168.100.254. So next is our DHCP relay configuration. So I will close this one and we go to IP. So first I want to show you IP DHCP server. There are no DHCP server configured here. So let me close this one. So IP DHCP relay. So we have two relay because we have two VLAN test clients or test VLANs that we want to relay the DHCP requests. So we have from VLAN 10. Okay, so VLAN 10 relay is the name. The interface, so it's not the Ether3 interface wherein our VLAN 10 are connected, but it's the VLAN 10 layer 3 interface. Next is the DHCP server. So this is the IP of the Windows Server 2012 R2, which is 192.168.100.1. And the local address is 192.168.10.254. So the local address, so it should be one of the IP address here. So in this case, it should be the VLAN 10 address. Okay. So once the Windows Server 2012 R2 is boot up, we will try to verify if we could reach via ping and ping the DHCP server address first before we will test our clients if they will be able to get IP address information. So next is for our VLAN 20. So let's close this one. So we have one for VLAN 20 as well. So the name is VLAN 20 dash relay or you name it to your liking. So the interface, so it's not the Ether 4, but instead it should be the VLAN 20 interface. So the DHCP server remains the same, the server IP 192.168.100.1. But this time, the local address should match the interface IP for VLAN 20. So in our case, the local address should be 192.168.20.254. Because if you take a look at IP addresses, that is the IP for our VLAN 20 interface. Okay, so that's about it in our relay configuration. So we should now turn on our Windows Server 2012 R2. And check first if we could reach it via our management interface. So we have turned on our Windows Server 2012 R2, which is our DHCP server. 
So currently, there's already an IP address, 192.168.100.1. So if you want to check if we have connectivity for our VLAN 100 management, so let's try to ping our Microtik DHCP relay. And the address for that relay is 192.168.100.254. So this should be connection to that particular Microtik. And yes, there is a reply. So we have now IP connectivity to our DHCP relay. So the DHCP server role is installed. So if you take a look, there's already a DHCP here wherein we can go in and open the DHCP manager. So if we will expand the server IPv4, so now we have already configured scopes. So we have our scope from our previous video, 192.168.100.0. So for our VLAN 100, but what's important here are our scopes for 192.168.10.0. So we have our address pool, which is this one, 100 to 10.200. So we have also a scope for our VLAN 20, which is 192.168.20.0. And the address pool is also the same, 192.168.20.100. And 192.168.20.200. So important thing to note is the VLAN 10 here is actually just a name of the scope. So I could change it to a different name. So it is not necessarily to be a name for the VLAN ID. So I could put in like for example finance or this is a different department name. So it doesn't matter. It's just a scope name. Okay, so one thing to note, our scopes are already activated. So it's important also, once you create a scope, you must activate it. So the status is active for our three scopes. Also, our address leases for our VLAN 10. So to note, there are no test clients that are yet to be given an IP address because our Test clients are not yet turned on or we have disabled the interface. That is also true with our VLAN 20. There are no address given out yet. So now we have our test VM. So as of the moment, it is disabled yet, the Ethernet or network adapter. So let's just also note the host name inq01 and now we will enable this one and see if it acquires an ip okay so let us double check that it has no static ip and yes there is no static ip that is configured and let's click the status and yes it acquires an ip from the lease range 192.168.10.100 the DHCP server is our Windows Server 2012 R2. So if we double check if we could reach now our DHCP server, and yes, and our relay, which is our Microtik, and yes, it's reachable. Let's double check or verify in our Windows Server. So we go to VLAN 10 because that computer is a VLAN 10 network so we go to address leases we refresh and yes there is now a computer that has been given out an ip address which is the correct or the matching ip address from our test client and also take note the host name is also reflected correctly here inq01 also we can verify here in our dhcp relay if there is really activity so IP DHCP relay and for this case it's VLAN 10 relay and if you go to status you see that there are requests and there are indeed responses to these such requests. Okay so this is now done so the Windows virtual machine did get an IP so 192.168.10.100 in that case. 
So now let's test the other test client on VLAN 20. So currently the PC name is PC2 and let's configure it with a DHCP settings on its network adapter. And there you go, the discover offer request acknowledge process is done and you see it acquires a VLAN 20 IP address, 192.168.20.100. And for checking, let's try to see if IP connectivity or our MicroTik is available. And yes, it's reachable. So we can verify in our Windows Server side. So we go to VLAN 20, address leases and refresh and yes so although the pc name seems to be off because that is a virtual simulator but it did reflect the correct ip address 192.168.20.100 and finally here in our dhcp relay so we could see our dhcp relay in our vlan 20 relay status and indeed there is some request and the responses are given as a summary, first we've shown the VLAN configuration in our MicroTik. So I hope you see that for our DHCP server port, it is not a tag interface, but rather just an untag or access port. Next, we have shown the DHCP relay configuration. Important thing to note there is that the interface should be the VLAN interfaces rather than the Ether interface. Then for our DHCP server configuration, we have scopes. And in case you wonder if there is a VLAN identifier in each of those scopes, there is none. Lastly, we have verified from our test clients in VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 that indeed, our configuration is working because our clients are able to get IP address from their respective VLAN subnet. I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you for watching.